heart disease is comparable to cancer and a couple other illnesses and diseases in a way that it affects at least someone that we know. Everyone you know knows someone who has dealt with something like heart disease. One of my friends, one of his family members deals with heart disease and I just know from what he's told me, it can be kind of a struggle sometimes. It can be tough. And I like to see that he's putting his best foot forward and giving his effort towards that family member, doing everything he can to support it. We're all connected in some way. Everybody has a health issue at some level in their family somewhere if they go look for it. Regrettably, heart disease is a kind of an American phenomenon globally. A lot of people associate heart disease with men, but women actually have a very high incidence of heart disease. The heart association plays on both sides of the fence, meaning male and female. The conditions of a male heart attack are very different than a female heart attack. More women die of the initial heart attack than men because it's not diagnosed right and they have a different perception of what a problem is. Sometimes women just don't stop. They just keep going. Mm -hmm. They're running families, kids here and there, and sometimes they don't stop and just go, hey, I've got some symptoms and maybe I need to check it out. My aunt, who is um, maybe 65, played tennis, um, jogged, worked out. I mean, really a healthy lady. and. Um, just all of a sudden, triple bypass. No, no lead up to that that she was aware of. And I think that's part of it. It's not always someone that looks like they're gonna have a heart attack or looks unhealthy. She looked very healthy and she was very active. She had the triple bypass and she re she's recovering well and healing quickly because she was, you know, overall a healthy person, but um, it still took a toll on her. My grandmother uh, struggled or passed away from heart disease. Um, she had multiple heart attacks um, in probably the last 10 years of her life. Um, and my mother cared for her in the last decade of her life as well. Um, so it had a big impact on me. She has been gone for about seven years now. I think what I admire most about my grandmother is her commitment to family. Even when it wasn't always perfect, she was always there and holding things together. It was like a safe space. She is definitely like the matriarch of the family. I mean, she kept, kept it all together. My grandmother was always a little more independent. It was difficult to have a mom who was caring full time for a grandparent. The most tragic part is that care work is super important, but it's not rewarded financially. Like my mother now has no uh, retirement savings because she took a huge portion of her adult life to both care for myself and then my grandparents. I mean, years ago, open heart surgery and bypass surgery was the most performed operation in the country. Once you get heart disease, it doesn't go away. You got it. You just got to manage it right. I'm blessed to be here, so every day is a, a win for me. My experience was I never had any symptoms. I was always physically active, but the DNA was my father and mother had some heart issues. I inherited it. I worked too much. I didn't take physically as good care of myself as I should. At 55, I got whacked with a heart attack that I wasn't sure what it was. I got to the hospital. They did five different EKGs. They weren't comfortable letting me go and they called in a cardiologist. The, the, the doctor that did the EKG saved my life because he wouldn't let me go and didn't want me to go home and then they called in the cardiologist and he didn't look at that EKG for three seconds. He knew and they put me in an ambulance, immediately took me to a hospital. Uh, they did angiogram on me where they go in through a femoral artery and look in your heart. They shut that down, they put me in a coma for three days and then when I got strong enough, they did bypass surgery, which saved me. When I had the heart attack, which I didn't know I was having, there was no pain, but it was like what I would envision maybe kind of like drowning. I knew something was terribly wrong, but I didn't know what it was. I'm blessed I came through it and modern medicine and, and cardiologists, and we're blessed to have it.
I'm the youngest of five. Uh, my next closest sibling is nine years older than me. So I have two older brothers, two older sisters. It, it was um, one month after I was born, my father uh, had his uh, first open heart surgery, the first of four, and then he had a heart transplant. Um, it would stem from grammatic fever, uh, which fortunately isn't a hereditary disease in my family, but in terms of, of just that and what he had to go through, what I saw, it didn't come to the forefront to the early 70s. Had his first open heart transplant in 1972. I mean, this was uh, you know, more of a bad hand that was dealt to him and he just dealt with it the best that he could. Um, you know, Obviously there was always the, make sure you're taking care of yourself. I personally have been touched by heart disease because my father had a heart attack when he was 52. I remember it pretty vividly. He was away on a business trip. He was supposed to return that day and he didn't come home and I had called my mother to find out if she had any communication with him as I could not get a hold of him. Then found out that he was in a, a shuttle van on his way to another dealership and he didn't feel right. And so he went back to his hotel room that night and took a couple aspirin and went to bed. He woke up in the middle of the night with chest pains and called the front desk and they brought an ambulance in and they had to bring him to the hospital in an ambulance and he had to have bypass surgery on two of his valves in his heart at 52 years old. We were 600 miles away when this happened. You don't ever know when all the chips are finally going to fall based on what you did 10 and 20 years ago and to have to face that alone, wouldn't want that for him and uh, glad it turned out the way it did. There's way too much at risk for all of us in our lives to not do the things we can do that are within our control. Because once it's out of your control, you just gotta hang on and hope for the best. And I would rather be proactive than hope. The results traditionally are better. He was out there for two weeks in recovery and then came home and we had to have a sit down. It was just a conversation to try and put everything in perspective and say, what's the long-term goal here? Because the short-term behavior is going to interfere with the long-term goal if we don't do something about it, like now. So for me, it was kind of an eye-opener because I almost lost my father for something that I seemed to think was kind of foolish and easily preventable. I think that his intention was always to make the effort, but some things just got in the way of that. And I don't necessarily think that it was something that was a choice as much as he had a business and failure wasn't an option, so the choice was almost made for him. The one thing he always taught me was the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. What are you gonna do on a daily basis to get better every day and never be satisfied, always strive to attain perfection. He brought out the best in you, whether you were on his side or an opponent. And, and that's what I think is really neat, just uh, uh, someone who just wanted to get the best out of every individual. And he was a very private guy, so he didn't show a lot of things. There wasn't a lot of uh, I love you exchanges, but you just knew. You just knew. To say anything specific would be too hard. With every surgery, you saw him become healthier and, and him gain energy. And, and I remember that summer after he had it, I, I, it was like a new person. It was unbelievable. His ability to have energy and sustain and day in and day out and not be fatigued. It, it, was, it was a wonderful summer. That was probably, you know, to your point, one of the better memories. That, that summer was one of the best memories that I, that I can recall. And, and unfortunately, because it was so new and the stuff um, with the, the surgery, you know, didn't last long but it lasted long enough to where those memories were that much special. It, it was just nonstop go, go, go. We used to, to coach together, play together, run camps together, and we just kept going and going and going. And, and when camp was over and, and we'd go home, it wasn't, you know, oh, I gotta I got stop. You know, we'd go back outside, we would play cards, we would just find something to do. It just it just never ended. And you could see the strength building, you know, kind of day after day and him doing a little more and then he gets the, you know, kind of clean bill of health. And, you know, we had that uh, that that summer after that was uh, tremendous. And, you know, then like everything, some things take, some things for a long time, some things take for a, a short time. And, you know, slowly the, 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 the digression began.
you, you just don't know what's going to happen. And if you have the opportunity to spend that quality time to create those and captivate those memories for yourself, your families, your loved ones, you know, that's, that's something to think long and hard about. Is it easy? No. Is it stressful? Yes. But to be able to put yourself in a position to potentially do that is something you have to consider because uh, I'm glad my dad did it the way he did it because if he didn't, a lot of the great memories that I have wouldn't be there. Thank goodness for modern medicine, technology, cardiologists, uh, echocardiograms, angioplasty, open heart surgery, all this just saves. You don't take anything for granted, you don't, and you try to modify how you eat and how you behave. Sometimes you do better than others, sometimes I'll have french fries and I shouldn't, that kind of stuff. And you got, the real key is to exercise 15, 25 minutes, four or five times a week to get your heart rate up. The doctor told me it took 40 years to develop the arteriosclerosis that I have in my system. It took 40 years for that to develop. This creeps up on you, of course, the older you get, you don't get stronger. And so that's something you really want to pay attention to because it's not a joke. Generally, quick is not healthy. And it's not as difficult as I think a lot of people think it is. As we understand that it's not only harder to get healthy when you're unhealthy, but the cost becomes a lot greater if you don't. And the window doesn't stay open forever. You got to make sure that you're doing the best you can so you can maximize the time you have here. I wish there was like an easy way to deal with it. Heart disease is preventable because you can change your diet and exercise, do all the things that are really hard to do on a day-to-day -day basis um, when we're all trying to live these extremely sped up, fast forwarded lives. Most of us have the information. We need the resources to make it easier for us and the social constructs to make it a part of our daily living. Making places walkable or rideable if you're on a bike or skates or things like that. I do wish, speaking from an organization standpoint, that there was more emphasis put on how important it is that we get away from our desks at least a couple times a day and take a walk around the block and have that not only physical movement but like mental clarity to bring that back to our workspaces and I think a lot of times in the stress or day-to-day -day grind it's like oh I just don't have time. Take care of your heart it's uh, to me the most important organ in your body you got to take real good care of it go out and exercise eat right just do whatever you can it's important Love yourself. <laughs>